Uh, before we introduce some of our speakers and talk about why we're here, I just wanted to uh, begin by thanking Congressman Higgins very much. First of all, I think he needs an office here at Niagara Falls High School. He spends so much time here. But let me tell you what he's done. Uh, in the last, not even one year, Congressman Higgins has brought $7 million of federal money to the Niagara Falls School District. Uh, earlier in the year, he was here for a press conference where we were able to announce a $1 million stop violence grant as a result of the federal government and Congressman Higgins. Uh, last summer, Congressman Higgins was here to give the school district $2.4 million to start our Head Start program, where now you could go to our uh, CEC building and find one and two-year-old students. That happened because of the federal government. And today, Congressman Higgins is here to award the Niagara Falls School District another $3.5 million to expand, increase, and uh, keep moving forward our initiatives around mental health. Uh, this doesn't happen without the support of a congressman like Brian Higgins. He is our friend, he's our partner, he brings money to Niagara Falls, and we're very grateful, Congressman, for you always considering uh, Niagara Falls and Niagara Falls High School. I, I will introduce some of the other people that are with us when I talk a moment about the program, and probably our most important speaker, Jayla Scott, when I introduce her. But I want to just say something to Congressman Higgins and to everyone here. So, yeah, you say $7 million, that's great. What's it doing? Well, yesterday, the New York State Education Department released the graduation rate for high schools in New York State. 635 high schools in New York State, the graduation rate was released. And if we were standing here in 2019, I would tell you that uh, we are at a very substandard 67% graduation rate not reflective of our school, our city, our kids, and quite disappointing. But when you read the graduation rate in the paper tomorrow for Niagara Falls High School, as released by the New York State Education Department, you will find that we are now graduating students here at 83.5%. In four years, that's a 17% increase in the graduation rates of students. Why do I mention that today? <laughs> First of all, I'm really proud of our students and our staff and our administrators. Secondly, I mention it because the programs and the support we're getting, not only from our state officials, but from our congressmen, are, are programs that are working for kids. They're working for kids. We've reduced the dropout rate from 25% to 7%. Still not where we want to be, but certainly uh, in moving in the right direction. I'm really proud to tell you that today, and I'm proud to use this podium and this event to uh, announce that. But it's tied into the fact that Congressman Higgins continues to bring programs to the Niagara Falls School District in the city of Niagara Falls that's making us better. So with that, I want to introduce our Congressman and say thank you very much. We appreciate your continued support. We appreciate that you come to Niagara Falls, to the school district, anytime we call and that you're a true partner to our district and our city. So, Congressman Brian Higgins. Thank you, Mark. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I must tell you, you know, first of all, I'm just very impressed with this school. Uh, as Mark has said, we've been here several times, and we are uh, impressed with the student body, uh, with the faculty, with the leadership of this great school, and everybody that supports them. I'm a big lover of libraries. I used to spend a lot of time in the library in Buffalo, and I find that, you know, people, librarians are the most helpful people of any public servants, uh, as well as, as teachers, so I'm just thrilled to be here. And Mark, I, I will tell you, I am very, very impressed. We, we appropriate money in Congress. We make a budget every year, and then programs are created, but they're, the determination for the, the, the earmarking of that money is based on a competitive process. So a lot of schools, a lot of programs will compete nationally to be selected for very few dollars that exist. And this school district, under the 
leadership of Superintendent Mark Laurie has been extraordinarily successful. Uh, not only today, but as Mark said previously and prospectively as well. So I'm just here to congratulate everybody along with Mark Laurie, uh, our great mayor uh, in the city of, of Niagara Falls here, Robert Restaino. Love working with uh, Robert and uh, love his commitment and his vision uh, to this city. Uh, Niagara University president, uh, Father Jim Marr. Uh, also, it's a great Catholic university, Niagara University in the Vincentian uh, tradition, and it adds tremendously to the quality of life here in Niagara Falls, but throughout all of Western New York. And, and Father Marr is, is a great visionary leader as well. And Jayla Scott. It's great to have Jayla here, a sprinter, <laughs> uh, Niagara Falls uh, student, and uh, uh, a great, uh, great potential uh, for whatever you decide to do, whether it's uh, Morgan State or, or somewhere else. And Megan Corey from the SUNY uh, at Buffalo Institute of Trauma and Trauma-Informed Care. I have a friend of mine that does this kind of thing, and I said, you know, what are those programs? that are really, really effective in dealing with the experiences that younger people are dealing with uh, today because uh, mental health issues, um, anxiety, uh, depression, uh, trauma, all of these situations are increasing, which requires that we do more uh, to help our, our young people. And he said, it's, it's not a program, it's relationships. And as I said, when I walk in here, I get a sense that you know, you feel a sense of ownership here, a sense of home uh, with your individual friends, but with your teachers and everybody that supports uh, this great, great school. So just to highlight this, between 2016 and 2020, the number of teens, teenagers, diagnosed with anxiety grew by 29%. Uh, the COVID pandemic and other factors ranging from stress and safety to hardships and relationships have only exacerbated the mental health challenges of our young people today. The situation is so concerning that in 2021, the American Academy of Pediatrics declared a national emergency, a national emergency in child and adolescent mental health, a shortage of mental health professionals available to meet the demand is creating a real access barrier for families right here in Western New York. We are here today, as the superintendent had said, to announce a federal grant totaling $6.1 million awarded to the Niagara Falls School District to support student mental health and to build a pipeline of professionals uh, to help young people. The school district, under the leadership of Mark Laurie, uh, is partnering with Niagara University and the University of Buffalo to expand access to mental health care through trained psychology and social work graduate students. The grant provided through the United States Department of Education's school-based mental health service program, as I said, is highly competitive. And Mark Laurie again, and the entire school district team are to be commended for aggressively, creatively pursuing the available resources. More people don't get this money than get it. This $6 million federal grant for mental health builds on other competitive federal grants recently won by the district, as the superintendent has said. $2.2 million annually for assuming operation of the Head Start program, and $1 million announced last October for school safety measures made possible through the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act. Together, all of these efforts are making a real difference in the lives of Niagara Falls students children and their families. And it now gives me great pleasure to turn over to Superintendent Lori. Obviously, I didn't get the memo. <laughs> give, give, it, give it back to you because you. you're serving as uh, a big check. Yeah. <laughs> I want that big check that I try to put through the drive through but <laughs> Thank you very much, Congressman. We, we appreciate it. And I, I pledge, um, along with the staff, to use that money with efficacy and for the purpose that you've granted it to us. And, most importantly to our students that are here to witness it. Didn't come because I did anything. It came because we have a team that works. Richard Carella, our assistant superintendent for curriculum instruction, led the team that wrote this grant. 
So Rick, I want to say publicly in front of everybody, thank you for your leadership. Our school administrator, Cheryl Villardo, who is the principal of Niagara Falls High School, along with Brian Rotella, who is uniquely involved in this initiative at Niagara Falls High School. They contribute to this, but most importantly, it, um, it, it, it'll resonate with Jayla and her classmates. I wanted to say one other thing about the graduation rate, and it really relates to trauma. And it really is something that is talked about quite a bit throughout the, the state. <clears throat> I announced today that our graduation rate is up to 83.5%. Something that you should know is that along with trauma, we work very closely with diversity, equity, and inclusion. And part of, part of diversity, equity, and inclusion is to make sure that we don't re-traumatize students or the community. And I, as much as I'm proud of the 83% graduation rate, I'm also proud of the fact that our difference between white students and non-white students, black and brown students, is a very minuscule 3%, which is way, way, way above the state average. You don't see a difference in the graduation rate of black and brown students versus white students. It's a 3% difference, and that is really something that you don't see, and that's attributable to trauma-informed practices because it is the backbone of diversity, equity, and inclusion, which we believe in so strongly in this district. As the Congressman mentioned, we have partners. Uh, we have the benefit and the luxury of having our mayor as a former board president, and nine-year board member, and I know it's his belief that when we have stronger students, we have a stronger community and stronger citizens. So, Mayor Restaino, we'd like you to address uh, the crowd. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone. Um, the superintendent's right. Uh, during the time that I spent uh, on the school board, he and I spoke um, during his period as deputy superintendent, and then once um, we confirmed his selection as superintendent, we always talked about the graduation rate and the importance of it as a building block for a healthy community. The fact that our district has made that kind of move along the, um, along the grade is really a tribute um, to programming, commitment and the ability and I think it was the congressman who said an environment an environment that welcomed the students to take ownership um, in their educational space this particular grant and the program that it is going to assist you know much is made of um, the pandemic and how the pandemic has caused this that and the other thing well I do believe and I, again um, I, I know that the congressman knows, that it knows this and mentioned it. Some of the issues that are confronting today's young people are issues that have not yet been completely explored. And so it's not always just a pandemic generated problem. It is relationships. It's the differences now that we see in family structure, the differences now that we see in individualism. And those things all have to be recognized, validated, and elevated so that nobody, nobody gets left behind just because of where they may be along the spectrum. So, you know, it's always great to welcome Congressman Higgins here. And I know <clears throat> along with his generosity to the district, you know, his commitment <clears throat> to the city of Niagara Falls, and not just, by the way, in terms of dollars and cents. You know, sometimes, you know, we look at our <clears throat> representatives as piggy banks, you know, okay, Congressman's here, it's time to you know, pull, the, pull the lever down and see if he can throw out some money. It's more than that. I can tell you that there isn't a time that we haven't contacted uh, the office of the congressman for our mutual constituents and gotten results, gotten answers, um, moved things along the process. Um, so <clears throat> let me just say that you know, in terms of partnerships, um, obviously we value our partnership uh, with the school district. I'd like to think that, that um, since my coming uh, to City Hall, we've been able to grow that relationship. Um, I also value deeply uh, the city's relationship with its Congress member, as well as someone who I know you're going to hear from, um, and that's our partnership with Niagara University. It seems like everywhere I go, no matter what I'm appearing at or um, where I'm gonna make an announcement, um, either Father Meyer's there with me or somebody from the university's there. Niagara University 
isn't just sitting on the outskirts of town. Niagara University has jumped headlong into the city of Niagara Falls, and they continue to do that. Um, so I, I appreciate their engagement in this. Um, I think that, again, looking across the partnerships that are here, um, I, don't, I, I, I don't know how this can fail. Um, and so let me first congratulate um, the district on this competitive award. Um, certainly congratulate the district on these numbers uh, that, I, have, that, that, that I, I heard about yesterday afternoon. And, um, and know that to the extent that City Hall, your local government, um, can assist and engage, um, we're there to be a partner with you. So congratulations again and thank you. Uh, Mayor did a really good job introducing our partner. We, we like to think of Niagara University as an extension of this campus. Niagara University's proximity is close to us. They have a different zip code, but we think they're a direct, streamlined uh, educational institution that's hooked up to Niagara Falls and to our school district. And uh, it's really because of the leadership of Father Maher uh, that we are able to do this and the, and the, you know, the willingness to always say whatever it takes we'll do it at Niagara. Let me just tell everybody where, where Niagara, I'll start with where UB fits into this. The University of Buffalo fits into this with Megan in, in terms of training our students, training our students in trauma-informed practices, training our staff in terms of uh, trauma-informed practices. Jayla, uh, Jayla is, a, is an example of someone that Megan has worked with and she'll speak in a moment. But Jayla and the other students that work with her get their training through the University of Buffalo. And we're very honored that you're part of our team as well. On the Niagara University side, it does two very important things. First of all, Niagara University students who are in programs such as social work, counseling, school psychology, even teaching to some degree, this grant will allow us to give stipends to Niagara University students to come and work in our schools, provide their support to our teachers and staff while earning a stipend to work and further their education. So it's really great that Niagara University has that campus that allows students to come into the school and practice what they're learning in the classroom. It will help us to develop the next set of counselors, social workers, psychologists, and teachers. Stipends will be given. It also, it also will give uh, money and support to any student, any student who is interested in entering a career in the health-related professions. So I'm looking to my right here and looking at the students. So if there is a student out there that's looking to get into a health-related profession, be it social work or anything else around the health related profession, you will be able to access money from that grant to continue to build the pipeline of future teachers, psychologists, social workers, and counselors. They'll get their instruction from Niagara University. And we're fortunate to have uh, the president here with us. So Father, thank you very much for your partnership and we're glad that you're with us. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. David. Thank you, Mark, and let me add my congratulations and uh, thanks to Congressman Higgins and his staff, um, to Mark Laurie, uh, Superintendent, to Mayor Rostino, and to the educational leadership team that's here from Niagara Falls and the district. Um, I firmly believe that educational environments are ecosystems, that we don't learn in a vacuum, uh, that our social and emotional and spiritual lives are critically important in fostering the development of young people and learning. And that's really what this grant does. So we are absolutely pleased and privileged to be a part of this with the University of Buffalo and with all of our partners. And um, we thank the, uh, the district and the congressmen for the opportunity for our students and faculty to be able to advance their learning, their craft, and for our students, very honestly, their career development as people who will be dedicated as mental health professionals and as educators uh, moving forward. We are incredibly proud to have this partnership, to be part of it. And for us, when, we, when I look at these young people and I think about Jayla and the, the opportunities that they will have because this ecosystem 
was broad enough and deep enough to foster their development and create a future for them and for us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Father. Just two more people that I'd like to uh, ask to come forward, and they're, they're, they're very important um, to us. Uh, one, I just want to say something about school boards. School boards are uh, probably at the toughest point in the history that I can remember them in my 40 years of being an educator to volunteer, to volunteer to be on a school board and show up every week and do their work uh, is really quite a commitment and quite an act of community service. One thing I'd like to say about the Niagara Falls School Board, and it's, we're represented by one of our members, uh, Mr. Rob Bilson today, our school board is laser focused on making sure students get everything that they need. They don't get caught up in a lot of other things that some other places do. They get caught up in saying, what do we need to do? How are we gonna get the resources and get it done? And uh, Rob Bilson, uh, who's I think third year? Third year school board uh, member here in Niagara Falls is representing the Niagara Falls School District and I know he wants to just share a few words. Thank you, Rob. First, I want to thank everyone for coming here today. It's, uh, it's nice to have you on our, our beautiful, wonderful school here at Niagara Falls High School. Um, <coughs> Congressman Higgins, Mayor, Father, uh, Superintendent Lori, you know, they, they've all said a lot of very important things today. And uh, I just want to echo the thank you uh, that we've provided today to all that have been involved in making sure that you know, we provide everything that we can to our students to our staff uh, to help you, you know, with this educational journey that you have each and every day when you come through the Niagara Falls uh, City School District. Um, I also come here not only as a board member, but as a father of five children who are currently going through the Niagara Falls City School District. So um, this is a direct impact. This grant, this $3.5 million is a direct impact, will have a direct impact on my family uh, and my wife is a school teacher as well. So, you know, this grant, it provides opportunities for our district uh, when it comes to trauma-informed care for our staff and students. Um, and I want to thank you to University of Buffalo for the great partnership that we have uh, to make sure that, that that runs as smoothly and is as, as effective as possible. Um, this grant also provides opportunity uh, to provide professional development to our staff um, and also provides opportunities for us for, as Mark mentioned, paid internships, um, stipends, if you will, for Niagara University students and helps us create a bench for future uh, uh, psychologists, social workers, um, and other opportunities uh, as we move forward uh, on their path to, to educational growth and potentially being a, a great member of this great school district, Niagara Falls, in the future. But uh, again, I just want to say thank you to everyone involved that helped us secure this grant. Um, on behalf of my, my amazing colleagues on the Niagara Falls City School District School Board, uh, we thank all of you uh, for uh, assisting in this. We help you for your work and efforts, and we thank all of you for coming here today uh, to, to support this, uh, this great school, this great school district, and uh, our staff and students. So with that, I'll turn it back over to Mr. Lori. And we thank you very much. So figure it out. We have 7,100 students. Rob's got five of them. So you're about one. That, that's a pretty good percentage of, of kids in our district. But that's putting, your, that's putting your most precious commodity, your children, where you, where you live. So I thank you, Rob, for being a board member and for your children. Most important speaker is last. Uh, I'm so proud of Jayla. This is Jayla Scott. I'm so proud of you. And let me tell you why. Not only is she an 11th grader. She's a fantastic, fantastic young lady. She is, um, she is a, as Congressman alluded to, she is a track star. She has, a, she has an indoor track meet tonight. We're not running outside. We have an indoor track meet. Uh, she, uh, do you run outdoor? Yeah. She does outdoor. I got to meet Jayla earlier this year, in, in, really in earnest, when we had a uh, situation with our soccer team and another soccer team. You may recall that. That's when I met Jayla, and uh, I, it, it just blew me away that someone that young 
could have that much poise, confidence, and clear-headed thinking when she started talking about what we needed to do to bridge a very difficult situation and difficult gap. First of all, her parents deserve a lot of credit. But Jayla is extraordinary. But I want to say one thing about her, not to diminish her accomplishments. Jayla is typical of these 20 students that are here there, standing there. They're good. They are good young people. Good young people. You're good people. We're proud of you. Uh, Jayla is going to speak today. But that's the kind of student we have at Niagara Falls and Niagara Falls High School. So I'm really proud to introduce Jayla and let her share just a few of her thoughts on maybe what she's learned about trauma-informed care and uh, how this grant will help her in the future. She, uh, she's pretty articulate, and we're very proud of you, and we know you'll come in first tonight, right? I'll try my best. All right. <laughs> come on up, Jayla right. Scott. <laughs> introduce your, introduce your colleague. <laughs> Hi, my name is Jayla Scott. I'm a junior here at Niagara Falls High School. Um, I'm a part of the championship team along with Neville Parchment and Megan Corey and six other of my peers. The student championship team assembled by IDIC, the trauma-informed care team, NFHS administrators, and NFHS teachers has very specific goals. Most importantly, IDIC is teaching my classmates and me to be trauma-informed. This means we learn about trauma so that we can recognize it, understand it better, and learn how to self-regulate. $3.5 million grant announced by Congressman Higgins and Superintendent Mark Laurie is a life-changing for students and families in Niagara Falls City School District. The other members of the champion, student champion team and me who are working hard to become trauma-informed recognize how this grant will positively encourage mental health support mental health awareness and preparing our students for careers in mental health. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Jayla. You hit, you hit a home run as we expected you would. Thank you. Jayla is thinking about, um, she's 11th grade, but she's thinking about college. Jayla went on our historically black college tour, and I think she was most impressed with Morgan State. So she's got her eyes set on Morgan State, but wherever you go, they're going to be lucky to have you. We're lucky you're with us now, so we appreciate you. So I learned from the congressman that this is the time when we say, uh, does anyone have any questions on the grant, the grant only, right, <laughs> Teresa? <laughs> right, just the grant. Other questions, we can, we'll take, we'll take every, if you wouldn't mind, we'd rather uh, ask just the media first, and if there's a student question, I know we'll be happy to answer it too. So does anyone have any questions for any of us? How is this program going to be rolled out over the, over the course of five years? Yes, right? yes. So uh, we're going to, um, we, have a lot of, we have a lot of initiatives to get started. First of all, this will allow us to continue to work with our students. Let's start with the students first. Jayla and Neville are part of the champion team. We're going to expand the champion team to have champion teams in our middle schools and even in our elementary schools. See, I believe champion, I believe kids are ready to do that in five, fifth and sixth grade. Not, and, and the champion team is small. We want to grow it. Uh, we have 2,000 students here. About eight, nine students on the team? About nine students. We have to make that team bigger. They have to be able to have more outreach to everyone else. That's number one. We want to grow it, and we want to build a steady pipeline coming up from sixth grade so that we don't have to retrain kids every year. That's number one. Number two, IDIC is in all of our schools. IDIC is the our, our acronym for trauma-informed care. IDIC will continue to work on staff development days and after-school meetings with our teachers. And not just our teachers, but with our um, non-instructional staff, our bus drivers, everybody in the school on being able to recognize and deal with students in trauma. That's number two. Number three, we are going to start to identify students in the school through our post-secondary success program who are interested in health related fields and we will start to channel and pipeline those students with this money to uh, not only have coursework in that but to enter early college programs at Niagara University and the final way that this will be rolled out will be to uh, actually we're doing it right today even before we got the money we are interviewing 11 today 11 uh, sc school psychology interns um, and it's competitive. So uh, we'll pick as many as we can uh, from Niagara University to 
be part of the program where they'll work with a school psychologist, get a stipend, we'll replicate that with our social workers and our school counselors and get, and get them into the school. So they're getting the stipend, but they have to do some work. They have to work with our kids. So we're interviewing today, uh, coincidentally, for that. So we'll hit those four tenets first, I think, um, and keep moving forward with everything else we're doing. Other questions? You're allowed to ask too, I guess. Yeah, I guess. Right. <laughs> uh, you brought up the pandemic, but of course, the Western New York community has gone through just a grueling year overall. So, um, with that impact on mental health, how important is it now to invest in your students to make sure that that they are doing okay? Yeah. So, we're, we there is no way to recover from a pandemic like that. That's why we have to drive these services right down into elementary school. And that's why I alluded to the fact that I want champion teams in elementary school. Uh, this is gonna be an ongoing process for some kids for the rest of their school career. We, um, again, this is all the work of Mr. Corella. We use a tool in our district, a very objective tool. It's called the BESS. It's called the BESS. The BESS is a tool that allows students to, and teachers to rate how a student is doing men mental health wise. And, and teachers have that tool and have the results, and they're able to pair up the needs from that tool to what to student needs, and we will bring in supports around that. So that right down to, goes to the kindergarten, Rick? Yeah. Right down to kindergartners, we have a mental health profile. It's nothing you know, you know, high level, but it just talks about areas of concern. Right at the kindergarten level, who needs what? And we'll match those needs with the skills that with the resources that we have to start supporting kids as early as kindergarten, right up through high school. And uh, we're, we're gonna need to do that for many, 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 many years, many years, in, in order to get to back to where we are. Because the pandemic, the pandemic was difficult. What was even more difficult was the year returning from the pandemic. That was much more difficult for this school district. That was a difficult year. We hadn't, be, you know, we talked all about relationships. We lost all those relationships in that year. We took a good year last year, I'm looking at Mr. O'Donnell, one of the teachers, to build those relationships back up. We're having a great year this year uh, because they're back formed. So it, 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 it's gonna take some time and this has gotta last. That's why five years is really important to us. It's really important for the kids that have come after it. Come after this class, come after Jayla and Neville. Other what questions? Is, what has the feedback been like from the families of the students who've been involved? Very appreciative. Very appreciative, and I'll, I'll let, uh, I don't know, Jayla, you talk to your mom much, but very appreciative. Many of our parents, and I'm, this is not disparagement against the parent, reach out to us and say, I need help, what can you do? I need help, what can you do? I need resources, what can you do? Our staff, we have a social studies teacher here. His role, from when I first met him as a teacher, has changed dramatically. He, he not only has to teach social studies, but he's got to make sure the kids are all right in his classroom. He need that's not what his pedagogy was coming through college. So we need to continually uptrain our teachers to deal not just with social studies um, pedagogy, but with strategies around trauma. Parents have been more than receptive and have asked for more than we can even give them. You talk to your mom, you talk to your mom or dad, or who, what do they say? You can answer. Go ahead. Well, um, as I'm joining the championship team, I've definitely talked to um, my parents about um, what we do in our championship team, and they think it's just a great idea to start implementing in our young children and just kids my age early that we're learning how to deal with trauma and recognizing it in other people and learning how to work with other people. So they think all around it's a very great idea, and it's something that will prepare you for success. This is Neville. Introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Neville Parchment. I'm a senior here. Um, what, starting in the trauma team last year, I start, started talking to my family about it. They were down from the beginning, ever since I showed them the message when I was first recruited for the team. It's been a long road. We've, and we've made so much progress throughout the year. It's, I still can't believe it. I know this is only my last year in high school, but I still want to, I still want to find a way that I can continue being a part of this team, being, continuing the, spreading the message of trauma and helping students younger than me improve, and the school district improve. What are you thinking about next year? 
I'm planning on going to, actually planning on going to UB for aerospace engineering. All right, we got, we got, is someone going to Niagara? <laughs> <laughs> There's also new step students here. Oh, the there we go. There we go, new step students. There we go, there you go, Father. <laughs> we're, we're, we're feeding you, we're, we're getting you there. Um, thank you very much. Good. This is the president. If you have any problems, you want a snow day, you go right to his office. When you go, no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Other, th other questions? I, uh, hey, you got, students got any questions? We can't stay here all day, but any questions? No? You sure? Why didn't we have a snow day today? You don't want to ask? We're tough. You're strong. You have coats. You made it here. You're healthy. It's a privilege to come here. You don't want to be anywhere else, right? <laughs> Let's go. Off topic questions now. Anything off topic for anyone? We're in the house with Mark Lawrence. No, no. <laughs> off topic. He'll take them. Yeah. <laughs> off topic questions? Um, I do want to know like, what the threshold is. Sorry, guys. Uh, but just how do you make the decision when to stay open and when oh. to close? I'm sorry. I, <laughs> I was given that question. That's okay. You were given. Uh, how do we stay open? And how are we not? I get. I got this quarter here. If it's if it's if it's heads, we stay open. If it's if it's tails, we close. No, no. Uh, so we're we're looking at a couple of things, right? We're looking at uh, in this particular case, we are looking at the uh, wind chill factor, and we're looking at a number about 18 to 20 below, uh, as a as a kind of a that's when we start to think. We did not think, and I think we were proved correctly that it didn't reach that low. Uh, it's not a hard fast that's got to hit it. We're looking for some sustained 18 to 20 below at, at, at particular times. And then we have a couple of options. We can now go to remote learning, but if we do that, I have to let them know a day in advance so they take all their technology home and the teachers are ready. We could go to a, we, we even thought about a delayed opening today. Delayed meaning sometimes it's really cold in the morning and then it starts to warm up as the day goes on. Or we could close school, which we have three built-in days. We just didn't think that the cold would sustain, uh, be sustainable and hit that mark of 18 to 20 below and decided not to close in Niagara Falls. We also confer with, uh, I, I confer with the Niagara and Orleans superintendents to see what they're doing. Um, we talk to the National Weather Service. We, uh, we talk to the mayor. If it's a snow event, we would talk to the mayor about, you know, where, depending on what time the snow's coming, where the plows are, where they can be. The other thing that we have to look at, which was not a factor today, is um, we have 2,500 walkers, about 4,500 bus students. 2,500 walkers, I mean, are the kids going to be forced and pushed into the street to walk? So there's almost a mental checklist I go through. Okay, those things were out the, out of the, out the window today. That, but those are some of the considerations we made. But in today's case, it was all about, are we going to stay at 18 to 20 below in a sustained way? A sustained way. I will say this, uh, our attendance is lighter because my stance, and I got some very pleasant uh, messages last night. Um, <laughs> my stance is this, if you as a parent feel that it's best for you to keep your child home on this day, you may do so, send a note in and I'll honor that. I, I, that's the ultimate. If you don't like the decision to stay open and you're, you're parent or guardian says, you know what, it's just not right for you to come. Uh, I will not argue or fight with you. I mean, if it's a reasonable, reason, today was a reasonable day to think like that. I, I always leave that final decision to a parent. Uh, and we did have a few who told me they were going to invoke that clause today. <laughs> so, I mean, that's, that's kind of my, kind of my fallout, my fallback answer to somebody who doesn't like the decision we, we make. So, okay, anything else? Congressman, what are we to make of the Chinese weather balloons? Well, it's, it's concerning. Uh, you, uh, you know, you have a relationship between the United States and China, which is problematic. It's very, very complicated. Uh, you have two countries in different parts of the world, two economic powers, uh, two very different forms of uh, a value society. 
um, it's still being investigated uh, by the Pentagon. Uh, it should be. Uh, you know, there was concerns about possibly shooting it down, <coughs> but there were concerns about safety relative to the result of, of shooting that down. Um, but I think it's indicative of a relationship that is very, very complicated and needs to improve. Uh, there's a billion people that live in China. There's 100, uh, 330 million people that live in America. Uh, China is aligned with Russia and their unprovoked invasion of Ukraine. We are assisting to the extent that we can uh, in helping Ukraine uh, protect, maintain, safeguard their democracy. But diplomacy is needed, you know, not with your friends, but with your so-called enemies. So my hope is that uh, the Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, is going to go to China. The details of that trip have not been disclosed yet, but uh, the provocation that comes with something like that, or at least the potential for provocation, uh, needs to be addressed in an adult way, in an honest way, uh, to ensure that uh, our people are kept safe. Enough? I'm glad I get the snow day questions. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take, Congressman, I'll take snow day questions anytime. Wow. That's some, that is serious and scary and I'll still take snow days. The congressman's got a very difficult job. He has a very difficult job, uh, but he always comes through and has that level-headed approach that we appreciate. Final call. Last call going once, twice. Thank you very much for being here. We appreciate you.